Come on, we want to welcome every location that is joining us today. Come on. We're so excited to have you guys with us. Special shout out to Chennai. Come on. Love you, Chennai. And I also know we have some Chennai people in the room. So grateful to have these guys here. We are kicking off a series called Smash the Idols. And I'm so, so excited for this. But I want to ask you a question. And that is, what comes to mind when I say the word idols? What comes to mind when I say the word idols? Because I know, I'm aware that I'm speaking to many locations right now. And every single one of us have very different experiences of what that is. Here in the UK, to the locations across the world, to India, to see and reap, there are completely different experiences of what idols are. So for you, what comes to mind when you think of the word idols? Maybe it's, I don't know, American Idol, <laughs> which is good at the moment. Anyone watching it is brilliant. Or a pop idol or some kind of celebrity or pop star. Maybe for you it's a, a sports hero or a, fo- I don't know, a football legend or some kind of icon. Maybe for you it is, it's a physical idol. It's these man-made statues or shrines like we see in countries all over the world. But for me, when I was growing up, anybody here remember the program Jungle Room? Anyone remember that? All the millennials are like, yes. It's Jungle Room. It used to play on CITV, CCTV. I don't know what it is. And this game, what they used to do is they used to collect little monkey idols. And they used to collect them and then they win prizes at the end of the game. Anyone remember that? That was such a good program. Such a good program. So when I think of idols, that's exactly what I think about. But for every single one of us, we have different definitions, different connotations, and different experiences of what idols are. Where I'm living right now, idols aren't that uncommon. Many of you will know that at the moment I'm living in India, which I absolutely love. We love it there. It's, it is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. But as you can imagine, initially being from the UK, it can also be a little bit crazy when you first move to India. And I'm sorry for the Chennaiites in the room today. But it was mental. It was crazy. You know, driving on the roads is literally a near-death experience. Yasmina will know. Almost, yeah. And it's not uncommon to be woken up by the sound of trains or... Festivals or parades or dogs. Like, it is so different. Even what people wear, even what people eat is so, so different. I remember um, a few years ago, we, uh, me, Martin, Trace, Luke, Ben, we were living in a house in St. Tom. And this place was a particularly Catholic place. So, obviously, there they, they worship Mary um, and all that kind of stuff. And I remember, you guys all know, at 3 a.m., you hear this, like, boom. Boom, boom, boom. And then it gets louder and louder and louder. And then there was cheering. It was terrifying. I was like, is this it? Is this the, is this the apocalypse? Is this, is this our time right now? It was so loud. And it, if it was so loud, it felt like it was in the room, wasn't it? It was mental. And we look out the window, and it's this massive shrine of Mary on this massive parade, and they're walking down the street, and hundreds, hundreds of people singing, dancing, shouting, like it was mental. But then not only that, they were climbing up buildings, like really high, to cut electric wires to fit this parade through. We were like, what is happening? So Luke, Luke grabs stones <laughs> and starts chucking them at people. <laughs> Name drop, sorry. It was mental. It was mental. But idols are so common in India. They are so, so common. But another thing that India is known for is it's the land of 33 million gods. 33 million gods. So when I talk about idols, like for me, that I have a very real view of what that is. I have a, view, a very real expectation of what that is. And I think for every single one of us, when I say the word idols, you have some kind of view. Whether that's, you know, Hinduism or Catholic, whatever it is, every single one of us have a particular understanding of what idols is. But 
we need to ask the question, is our view of an idol the same as God's view of an idol? And it says it here in Leviticus 26.1. This is what God says about idols. Do not make idols or set up an image or a sacred stone for yourselves. And do not place a carved stone in your land to bow down before it. I am the Lord, your God. God is so clear about our idols. God is so clear. He's so serious about our relationship with idols. And he, is, he makes it very clear for us in Scripture. Do not set up anything before me. Do not set up idols. Do not give your lives to anything but me. He makes it so clear that nothing and no one can compete with God. Nothing can be of the equal position with God. But when I look at this scripture, I immediately think about India. I don't know about you. I immediately think about, oh, it must be those man-made shrines. Or it must be those stone carvings. Or it must be those altars in the Old Testament. You know, like we read in the Old Testament books and we assume that that's what God is talking about. And I think some of us read it and it's like, Okay, yeah. Oh, do not make idols. Check. Or set up an image or a sacred stone. I think we're good. Check. Don't place a carved stone in your land to bow down before it. Check. I think a lot of us would put our hands up and say, I think we're safe with that one. I think we're safe from that one. And so often I think we disassociate ourselves from these scriptures and say, God, you know, that's for those kind of people, or that's for that religion, or that's for that country. And I had that perspective too, until God began to completely transform my understanding of idols. I remember there was one morning in India, and moving to India is quite, it's quite crazy the amount of idols that you see and it's quite burdening isn't it guys I mean praying interceding crying you know because it's so you're exposed to so much and it's hard it's so sad when you go there and see all of this exposure to idols and I remember one morning praying and I'm like interceding God would you break down these idols like so sick of this and God just challenged my heart and what he said to me was yes those things matter to me. You know, those things matter to me. But something that matters more to me is the idol in your heart right now. And I think, I think it's shocking to go to foreign lands and be shocked by the millions upon millions of idols and shrines and temples. But I think what's more shocking is the millions of idols in this room today. Because I think for every single one of us, we have a tendency to create idols within our hearts. We have, a ten- we have a disposition, I might say, that we create idols within our heart. We constantly bow down to the things of this world. We constantly glorify the things of the world and distract our focus off of God and onto the things around us. And I'm not exempt from that. God really challenged me about this. And yes, it could be false gods. And yeah, it could be, I don't know, a celebrity or a football star. But it could also be materialism. It can also be our money. It can also be our spouses or our children or, you know, or the career that we have, our education. It can be our gifting. It can be even the things that we believe God has given us that stand in the way of him. Even ourselves, ourselves we can create as an idol. We all have a tendency to create idols within our heart. So I want to tell you exactly what an idol is, just to make it very clear. An idol is anything, anything that takes our focus and reliance of God. And when I say anything, (laughs) I really mean anything. Anything can be an idol. Anything that takes your focus and your reliance off God 
is an idol. Wherever we rely on, whatever we trust in, whatever we focus on, whatever we put our comfort or our security or our approval in, other than God, is an idol. So I think it's safe to say that a lot of us can create idols within our hearts. A lot of us, that can describe, right? So there was one that I wanted to particularly talk about today. Um, and I was kind of umming over whether I give a generalization, whether I you know, tackle one idol at a time. And God really convicted me about one particular idol. And this is something that God has actually delivered me from. So when I speak of this idol, I'm not speaking from a place of condemnation and separate from this. Actually, this is something that God has set me free from. But I also believe a lot of people in this room also struggle with it today. And it's not the idol of materialism. I don't really care about those things. It's not you know, the idol of a celebrity or anything like that. Actually, what I am going to talk about today is what I feel is at the root of most of those things. And it's this. An idol of validation. The idol of validation. And again, this is something that God has really, really set me free from. Really been challenging in me for years Years and years and years. It's only in the last two, you know, three years that God has started to reveal this to me and start to deliver me of this. But I believe there is a very real idol of validation. A very real idol of validation. There is a tendency in all of us to desire validation. There is a desire in every single one of us to crave this idol of validation. And it is so, so real. And I think it's for a lot of us, whether you're here for the first time or whether you've been in ministry for years, whether you know God or not, I believe there's a very real idol of validation that we need to talk about today. And I, in fact, I think the idol of validation is probably the most thing that people desire in their lives. If you think about it, materialism, in order to get validation. A career, in order to get validation. Spouses, friends. We want to please people in order to get validation. I believe a lot of the things that we struggle with in this life, a lot of things that we desire, at the root of it is this idol of validation, this desperation to be validated. This desperation for people to validate us, to approve of us. And this is what validation actually means. Validation is the continual check-in of approval, acceptance, or affirmation of another. That continual check-in of approval, acceptance, or affirmation of another. I don't know about you, but at some points in my life, that describes me. That constant check-in to see if we're approved. That constant check-in to see if we have affirmation. That constant check-in to see, am I accepted right now? do Do I belong here right now? Do people like me right now? There is an idol within every single one of us that desires to be approved, that desires to be accepted, that desires to be affirmed by one another. And I think it's very real because everyone wants to be affirmed. Everyone wants to be accepted. Everybody wants to be approved. You know, it's true, isn't it? It feels good when someone likes your photo on Facebook or compliments you for what you wear. It feels good to know that your family approve of you or, you know, you can please your friends and your spouse. It feels good when you're noticed in the cafe or recognized for your hard work. You know, it feels good when you're invited to a party or your boss gives you praise. Like, those are good things. We live. We live that. But I think it goes much deeper than that. I want you to think about it. Do you ever feel preoccupied with wanting attention 
or trying to impress someone? Have you ever found yourself obsessing over what people thought about you? Do you dwell on that time that person made a negative comment and you can't seem to let it go? Or even, do you do things, even in church, just to reap affirmation from those around you? I think for a lot of us, we want to know that we're liked. We want to know that what we do is good. And if all that lines up, if all that goes to plan, then we feel accepted. Then we measure up. And really, at the bottom of all of that is this need to be validated. There's a part in every single one of us that desires to be recognized. That wants to feel like we matter. That wants to be noticed. That is waiting for the approval of another. And I don't know if you relate to that, but I'm sure there are people in this room that knows exactly what that feels like. And I've been there. I have been there. I know what it's like to be desperate for recognition. I know what it's like to feel like you're not good enough and therefore you need the affirmation of another person. I think this is something that is so real in this world. But you know where I see it more than ever? In the church. In the church with us. From the first time guest to a leader. From receiving a hello to receiving a thank you, from how we look to what we buy, from our job to our role, to what we do, to what we give, to how we're recognized and encouraged and even pastored. There is a need in every single one of us that desires to be validated, even within the church. And you know what? Those things aren't completely bad, okay? Those things are actually very legitimate things. They're very real feelings that we all have. No, it's not wrong to want to please your parents or your spouse or your loved one. It's not wrong to want to look good or do a good job. It's not wrong to want to be liked or approved of by your friends or family you know, even our DNA says everyone matters. You know, it's important to feel like we matter to people, to feel like we're important to people. But, but, if those things consume your thoughts and your actions, if those things drive your decisions, if those things are what you go to sleep or wake up thinking about, even if those things dictate your value, then that is an idol that we need to smash in our lives because that's not of God. You know, those are real needs that we have. There is a desire within every single one of us. There is a need within every single one of us. And do you know what? I believe that God placed that there. But so often we fill it with the things of the world. And that is never what we're called to do. That is never God's desire for us. And we need to smash this idol of validation. So, where do you crave validation? Where do you seek affirmation? What makes you feel good enough? Is it that compliment? Is it that relationship? Is it the approval from your friends or your family? Is it that job degree or the amount of money in the bank? Is it that one extra drink that makes you feel a little bit more confident? Is it your role or your position or even your gifting? If our validation is in anything other than God, then it is an idol that we need to smash. An idol that we need to smash. So I want to share with you someone in the Bible that I feel struggled with the same 
And this scripture might come as a little bit of a shock to you, but I really feel there's something in it that we can relate to. So obviously, on the back of the cave, we all know there's a God, hopefully. And we all know that there's a devil, right? I think we can agree on that one. The devil, enemy, Satan. But what some of us may not know is actually the devil wasn't always the devil. Actually, he used to be an angel. And he wasn't just an angel. He was the guardian angel. And he was in charge of the whole of worship in heaven. And his name was Lucifer. And he was actually really close to God. He was really close to God. In fact, this is what the Bible describes him as. You are the model of perfection. This is God speaking right now. You are the model of perfection, full of wisdom and exquisite in beauty. You went in the Eden, the garden of God. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone, all beautifully crafted for you and set in the finest gold. You were given to you on the day you were created. I ordained you and anointed you is the mighty angelic guardian. You had access to the holy mountain of God and walked among the stones of fire. You were blameless in all you did from the day you were created. Let's just pause there for a second. That is epic. That is an epic description of someone. I don't think any one of us would mind being described as that. This is God talking about Lucifer. You know, he was perfect. He was beautiful. He had everything that he could ever want. He was close to God. He was a leader. He was ordained. He was anointed. You know, everything that he could ever want was provided for him. Until the day evil was found in you. Lucifer had everything he ever wanted, and yet he was missing something. He was missing something. He was in heaven. He was an angel. He was, he was glorious. And yet there was something he was missing. And verse 17 goes on to tell us why. You were proud of being handsome, and your fame made you act like a fool. Because of this, I hurled you to the ground and left you as a warning to other kings. See, whilst he had everything, there was something that he was missing. And we see it here. Because of pride, because of pride, because of this desperation to be recognized, because of this desperation to be affirmed, he got hurled to the ground. There was pride within him. He wanted the recognition. He wanted the fame. He wanted the glory. And because of that, he fell. But whilst it was also pride, I'd also argue that it was because of his need for validation. Because think about it. If Lucifer was really fulfilled in God, if he truly embraced everything that he had in God, if he was validated in God, do you think he would have sought out affirmation in other things? It was because, it was because he wanted to be recognized. It was because he wanted the fame. It was because he wanted the affirmation that pride grew in his life. And because of that, he fell. And I think this is an extreme, it's quite an extreme scripture. I mean, we're talking about the devil, but I think a lot of us can relate to that. I think every single one of us can look to other things to fulfill our validation. You know, the devil, he went to his leadership. He went to his gifting. He went to his beauty. He saw these things in himself and he said, I should be glorified. I should be recognized for this. I want to be affirmed for these things. I want to be accepted for these things. I want to be appreciated for these things. And instead of embracing and pursuing validation in God, he pursued it in himself. He pursued it in the things of the world. And we do that all the time. 
when we don't feel validated, when we don't feel affirmed or accepted, how many times do we go to the things of the world to fulfill us? I think we can also go to our leadership. I think we can also go to our gifting. I think we can also go to our beauty, the way we look, what we wear. And if we don't do that, we're longing for that. And it's still a desperation for validation. What I also found really interesting is at the end of the scripture it says, I left you as a warning to other the kings. There is a principle in this scripture that God wants to teach us. He has left Lucifer. He has left the story of Lucifer to teach us, to teach us about the idol of validation, to teach us, to warn us not to go after these things. Don't go there. So today I want to pull out a few things that I believe we really need to know about the idol of validation. And the first one is this. It will never truly satisfy. It will never truly satisfy. That validation that you seek after in the things around you, whether that's your appearance, whether that's your success, whether that's your role, whether that's the amount of money that you can fill in the bank, whatever it is, it will never satisfy you. It will never satisfy you. And I think, honestly, we know that. I think, honestly, it's, of course, of course those things won't satisfy me. But if we know that, why do we keep doing it? Why do we keep seeking after these things? Why are we still so desperate for that validation in the things around us? You know, the problem with validation is because I think, we think at some point it will bring us satisfaction. We think if, if only I could just be more like this, if only I could just do more of this, if only I could just have more, th- more of this, then I will be validated, then I will be satisfied, then I will be secure. We're always looking for that there. If only I could get there. But when we get there, how many of us know there'll always be another there? There'll always be the next thing because those things will not make us happy. Those things will never satisfy us. Those things were never meant to fulfill the th- that gap and that void in every single one of us. Wherever you place your validation, it will never satisfy you. It can never, ever satisfy you. Now, it may satisfy you for a moment, but it can never truly satisfy that gap and that void within you. And here's why. Because searching for anything outside of God will never satisfy you. And this is why this is an idol. And this is why this is something we need to smash. Because these things stand in the way of God. Those things stand in the way of God. If you are so desperate to find validation in these things, you will miss your validation in God. But validation can only truly be found in God. That compliment will never truly satisfy you. That acknowledgement will never truly satisfy you. That achievement will never truly satisfy you. Do you know what? Even your spouse that you are so desperate for, will never truly fulfill and validate you. I think there are a lot of people in this room that are still waiting for that dream guy or that husband to come along or that wife to come along. Yes, those things are from God. Yes, they are good things. Yes, you are meant to do life together. But if your validation is in those things, it will never satisfy you. It will never satisfy you. And I think this is something that the world struggles with so much. So much. People are desperate, looking for something to satisfy them. Looking for something to fulfill them. People are searching everywhere and anywhere to try and fulfill that void within them. 
But searching for anything outside of God will never truly satisfy. If your value is dictated by the validation from others, you will never be satisfied. You know, for so long, I placed my value in what people could say about me. I placed my value in how people could approve of me. You know, those compliments that we desire, those things that we want to be appreciated for, those long, hard hours that we want to be thanked for. And I placed my value in those things. I placed my validation in those things. And I was empty. I was never satisfied. I was, it was this constant cycle of desperation that would never fulfill. If your value is dictated by your validation in others, then you will never be satisfied. You know, we need to be validated. We need to be affirmed. But we need to be careful that we don't search for those things in things that will never satisfy us or those things that will never please the Spirit because actually it only can come from God. It can only come from God. And I'm at a point in my life right now where only God can satisfy me. Only God can validate me. He is our fulfillment. He is our satisfaction. Nothing and no one can replace that. So the first one, it will never truly satisfy. But also, it will lead to your downfall. It will lead to your downfall. Think about it. Lucifer fell because his desperation for validation. And it was a pretty extreme fall, wasn't it? It was, it was a pretty extreme fall. Like we learned about it yesterday, about eternity and the other way. You know, we all know it's pretty extreme. And I'm not, I'm not talking about, like, hear me, I'm not talking about an eternal fall. But we are naive to think that at some point, there won't come a fall. At some point, we won't crash. At some point, we won't fail. At some point, we won't fall. You know, I know how satisfying it is when everything goes well. You know, I know how validated we feel when we get all that we need. You know, today you might have a good day, but what about tomorrow? What about when you have a bad day? Today you receive that encouragement, but what happens when you don't get it? Today you receive that affirmation or that award, but what happens when you fail? Today, your confidence is in your efforts. But what happens if you don't get it? Today, you feel great about the way you look. But what happens when someone insults you? Today, your reliance is in that spouse or that partner or that friend. But what if they disappoint you? If our validation are in those things, we will inevitably fall. Because it will not last forever. Those things were never supposed to be permanent. Those things will never last forever. They will inevitably end. They will inevitably fail us. If our validation are in those things, eventually there will come a fall. I don't know whether that's an emotional dip, whether that's a physical fail, whether that's a spiritual valley, But for every single, there will come a fall. And I experienced this. Late last year or the year before, 2016, I had such a rough season. Such a rough season. I was in, I was a pastor. I was leading church. I would turn up. I'd bring the passion. I was joyful. I loved, I loved the people around me. But there was an emptiness within me. There was a dissatisfaction within me. Because I longed for validation. And when I wasn't getting it, it knocked me off my course. It knocked my confidence. It knocked my validation. It knocked my value. You know, I placed my identity in the things that I did or the things that were around me or the things that people could say. But they don't last forever. And those things were never supposed to be what validated us in the first place. 
And I remember God taking me through such an incredible journey of finding my validation in Him and only Him. And I know that I'm not the only one here that does that. You know, I'm speaking to pastors, leaders, spouses, career men. If we place our validation in what we can do or the things around us, we will fall. We will fail us. And lastly, it robs you of God's best. It robs you of God's best. Placing your validation in anything other than God will inevitably rob you of the best he has for you. Because if you're always trying to please the people around you, you will miss what God has for you. If you are constantly desperate to meet the needs or please the people around you, you can't hold on to what God has for you. We cannot serve two masters. The Bible says it. We either bow to one thing and compromise the other. And God is saying, if we are so desperate for that validation, if that is what dictates our value, if those are the things we pursue, we will miss the very best that God has. You know, think about Lucifer. He was robbed of so much. Like he had everything, everything that any of us could ever want. He had all the leadership, he had all the friendship, he had all the validation, he had all the gifting, he had all of the looks, and yet he was robbed of God's best and he lost it all. He lost the leadership. He lost his beauty. He lost his friendship. He lost his gifting. He lost the best place that he could be. But you know what's the greatest thing that he lost? God. He lost God. You know, I think what the, the most saddest thing is not that he fell, is that he could have been fulfilled in God. And he chose to pursue those things in others, in the things of the world. And he lost out on the greatest, precious gift that we have ever been given. And that's God. Now, we think God's best is those material things. We think God's best is that spouse. We think God's best is that position or that success or that role. And those things are good. Like, I'll pray for those things for you. But the very best, the ultimate best that we have is God. God is the ultimate best. God is everything that we need. But the idol of validation robs us from God. And it robs us of God's best. The greatest thing the enemy was robbed of is God. And the greatest thing we are robbed of is God. It's so powerful. The enemy was robbed of God's best and ultimate, perfect, most satisfying relationship with God. And he lost it all just to get earthly, temporary, you know, eventually unsatisfying validation from the world. And we do that too. You know, how many of us, rather than looking in the Bible, go to our friend? How many of us, rather than relying on God's truth, we rely on the approval of our spouse? How many of us, rather than believing in God's promises, believing in who he is, believe instead on the success that we can earn, or the money that we can get in the bank, or the friends that we can surround us with? You know, those things rob us of God and his best you know, it will rob us of our confidence. It will rob us of our value. It will rob us from stepping out. It will rob us of confidence and grace and love and appreciation. It will rob us of those things because we're consumed. We rely and we trust in the things of the world over what God is and what he has for us. You have everything you'll ever need in God. And that's what's ugly about idols. That's what's ugly about the shrines and the temples that we put up in our heart and put around us. 
They lie and say that we need those things. We need the things of the world. But actually, the greatest thing, the ultimate truth is we have everything that we could ever need, want, crave in God. He validates us. He approves of us. He affirms us. He accepts us. And we don't have to do anything for that. Now, we work so hard. We exhaust ourselves trying to please this world, trying to obtain this world. But nothing and no one can validate you like God validates you. He is all that we could ever need or want. You know, he knows you and loves you. And your value and worth does not come from what you do or who you're in a relationship with. It doesn't spring out of how much money you have or how attractive you want to be. It doesn't come out of how many times you can succeed or how gifted you can be. It comes from God. You know, I shared about my journey and God had to bring me to a place where he said, so if I validate you, those things don't validate you. Those things can never satisfy you. Those things can, can never fulfill you. I validate you. And I think for a lot of us today, God wants to bring us back to that knowledge, that truth. You know, it's simple. All we need is God. And yet we make it so complicated for ourselves because we search for those things in the world. You keep expecting people to validate you, but only God can validate you. And that's why we need to smash this idol of validation. We need to smash this idol of validation in our life. So to finish, I'm going to welcome up the band and we're going to end with worship. But before we do, I want to read this scripture to you because I believe this is exactly what God wants to say to us today. And it's in Hosea 14. And it says, O Israel, come back. Return to your God. I will heal their waywardness. I will love them, lav them lavishly. I will make a fresh start with Israel. Ephraim is finished with gods that are no gods. From now on, I'm the one who answers and satisfies him. I am like a luxuriant fruit tree. Everything you need is found in me. If you want to live well, make sure you understand all of this. If you know what's good for you, you'll learn this inside and out. God's path, not the world's path. God's path gets you to where you want to go. To where you want to go. God is everything that we need. He is the one who answers. He is the one that satisfies. We can't find that in the world. We can't find that in anything else. It is only found in God. He is like a luxuriant fruit tree. Everything you need is found in me. I don't know what you desire here today. I don't know what you're desperate for today. I don't know what you want to be recognized for today or affirmed or accepted for what I do know is God is everything that you need he's even everything that you would ever want you know I look back and I think why did I go after these things why was I so desperate for these things you know, God is everything that I need and it's only in Him that we can truly be satisfied. So where is your validation today? 
Is there in your efforts? Is there in your success? Is there in your gifting? Is there in your looks? Is there in your popularity? Is there in your career? Is it in your friendship group? Is it in yourself? God wants to bring us back today. He is calling us to smash this idol of validation and embrace Him. Embrace all of Him with all that we are. Oh, Israel, oh, church, come back. Return to our God, for He is all that we need. And to finish, I want to leave us with this. When you long for God, like He longs for you, you will be satisfied. You will be satisfied. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. He validates you. He affirms you. He accepts you. He is all that we need. And when we long for Him, when we place Him first, when we worship Him, when we rely on Him, when He is our comfort, when He is all that we trust Him, when we long for Him like He longs for you, you will be satisfied.